Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the Jade Gemini. This afternoon, I'm super excited to go ahead and bring you a review of this guy right here. This is the Leatherman Free P2. And today, I'm going to be talking about the overall features of this, its size, as well as what I like, what I love, what I dislike, and if it applies, what is rubbish about this tool right here. Firstly, though, let's go and get some size comparisons out of the way. I'm going to kind of do uh, some different options, some stuff in EDC, and maybe some more common stuff in case you're just looking for a good multi-tool, but you're not in the knife community or the light community or anything like that. So first is a knife that everybody should have if you don't, but this is the QSP Penguin. This uh, is a $30 amazing knife. Really, really well to cut, easy to sharpen, holds an edge, just made really, really well and fun to fidget as well. So this is it butt to butt. And the width of this is also about the same width as a pair of three. So if you have a Spyderco pair of three, you can kind of get an idea of the width. As you can see, this is definitely bigger, but it's not absolutely insane you know, for all the utility that gets packed into this. Next is sort of the general shape of like a cell phone. So this is like a standard iPhone, you know, 11, 12, 14, 13, you know, your standard 6.1 iPhone would be right in a sort of circumference right there. And then last, you get your common AA battery. Oh. And again, there it is for width. So this thing in the handle wise is right about the circumference one handle of one double A. So it's kind of like two double A's right beside each other it is a really good comparison actually. And about two and a, a half double A's long. So that's overall sort of general dimensions, which I think, you know, just about covers everything. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So, firstly, so what do I like about this Leatherman P3 P2? Sorry about that. So, with this tool, I actually really, really love, just right away, what stuck out at me is the smooth operation. I got this thing out, pinch that, and bang, it flies right open, just like, so easy. Really is that smooth. And... That is something that is just really refreshing when I ended up opening this up, as well as the action here for the pliers. It is so smooth and free, um, well, as the name says, right? Um, but it's just absolutely great. I, we're so used to, with the older Leathermans, them being like having these little channels in here and it gets to here and you're sort of, and it's like really tight and sort of rickety and you know, you're having to do like this. and. You know, sometimes the pliers are so tight that it's making the, you know, edges collapse. You know, not the case here. It's ultra smooth right out of the box, which I got this thing it's in a trade, but it was, you know, brand new. So this is how you can kind of go ahead and expect to have it. And uh, anyone I've, I've, you know, put this in their hand that, you know, works in a trade or maybe goes fishing or, you know, just has used multi-tools in the past. They're like, wow, that is just insane and is so different from what I've experienced in the past and that's definitely something that you know I agree with as well so that's the first thing that I do like the next thing that I really really like about this tool is that the tools are on the outside a lot of Leatherman tools like the uh, wave and such you have to open them up select your tool out close it be able to go in and use it not the case here you have everything accessible on the outside and to get to the tools you simply run your finger in this channel and hit this groove right here, pull up, and then you can decide what you want really quickly. So if you want this package opener slash pry tool slash sort of, you know, thick flathead, sorry, you can have that as well. You just use this locking mechanism, close it, same thing. Get your Phillips out, which I'm also showing you the tools too, so you can see that, um, as well as a bottle opener, you know, really, really nice right there. Same sort of thing. Here, you can select, there's a bottle, sorry, can opener, there's this 
really, really sharp awl. You know, if you know like a Victorinox, like a Pioneer 91 millimeter, something like that, 93 millimeter especially, that's the Pioneer, sorry. 91's the other, uh, the Celador scales. But anyways, um, this is really sharp is what I'm trying to get to. This is a true all. This isn't like something they skimped on. And this is even really uh, fine enough to be able to get down into uh, small flatheads as well as even Phillips. So that's definitely a useful tool. You also get the sort of medium Phillips. It's got this sort of measurement as well as a wire strip right there. I guess you could kind of pry with that as well. And then you also have a sort of steel file, crossed hatch and single on the edge, as well as, uh, you know, again, sort of a smaller flathead. So lots of options with the flathead. Then you have the big toils. You have these scissors, which are another thing that I do like while I'm getting to them. They are right up there with like a Victorinox. You know, they, this is probably the best set of scissors that I've felt within anything that wasn't a Victorinox. Has that same sort of like lap over that when you close them, they shelf, they self sharpen and deburr because they are layered over and pushing into each other each time you close it like that. And they're just really smooth. Don't bind at all. Like absolutely great. Really, really great pair of scissors. I'm impressed. And then of course there is the blade which we're going to get to a little bit longer, but here's the blade, right? So those are the things that I like overall. And like I uh, was going to say to that point, is the overall tool set mostly, I feel like is really, really good for sort of that, you know, general EDC use that you're going to end up finding. Along with that, I've had some leather mints. Again, they just sort of feel tight or, you know, maybe like the sharpening is uneven or, you know, th there's sort of different marks or something like that. Overall, this quality definitely seems like it is a step above everything from the finishing on the outside, the way that everything is rounded off everywhere, really smooth, everything is smooth in action as well, the way that everything is, you know, tight and fits together. I think just about every plier style multi-tool has some play, but, you know, how loose this is, like, you know, when you're, when you're opening it, how smooth. Um, in comparison to how you know robust it does feel and how much of a user does feel like it's just really impressive overall and you can really see that you know uh, there is some different things which I'll you know kind of mention that do bother people but overall this is a complete step in engineering that they've ended up going ahead and you know moving forward with this their strongest plier heads you have the replaceable pliers like we were saying you have these this really really great engineered sort of like slip joint system that just cut, uh, moves out. And the way that it actually works is if you look, there are these little black, like rubber grommets or squishy parts in there. What happens when you close it is that the actual bolt moves up in the pliers and then drops into place. So this is actually moving like in this direction, this pivot, barely, and then it gets forced back down and into that. And then when you close it, it's doing the opposite thing. It's forcing itself up, letting go finally, and then being able to close. So just really smart, really, there was a lot of engineering that they put into this tool when going ahead and designing it. And that just, uh, you know, shows through and through. So those are all the things that I do like about it. Um, I like the fact that, you know, again, it's got some pretty good tools. Love the way that it also carries with the pocket. Um, I like, sorry, like, uh, you know, the smooth action as well as the overall fit and finish. And it just feels like a really good leap in the right direction, mostly with everything. What I love about this is the, um, the little things with this, right? The first thing is the blade. The blade shape is great on this. This is the best blade that they've put on a Leatherman multi-tool. This could go ahead and be someone's primary knife. You know, it is that good. The first thing I absolutely love, as you can see, you know, this sort of, you know, Vox Nays sort of modified, you know, sheep's foot design. This is more of like a worn clip, but it barely, you know, has a little bit of a, you know, upswept here. But with this, you've got a little bit of belly there. You've got this reinforced and actually really attractive looking swedge that goes all the way around and meets that tip not only for some added strength, but some good sliciness since there's less resistance as it comes 
after this flat, and then you also have a full flat grind. So even though this is the tallest blade, this thing does really cut and has some great geometry. And because of that, you know, you're going to get some strength out of this, but you're also going to get some utility for cutting open boxes, you know, cutting through packages. If you need something with like a belly, it's going to do all of that. I'm not a huge fan of serrations, but the serrations are, you know, sharp, you know, and they that will go ahead and make it where with this tool, you get a lot of use out of, you know, whatever task you're going to end up finding yourself kind of coming across. So that's the first thing that really stood out to me. And kind of talking to that point, um, the knife is actually in line with the chassis. So unlike some multi-tools where it's actually like the knife blade is on this side and you're cutting like this at the top because they open from like the inside, then you cut like that. The way that this works is, is it's in line with this. So if you push your hand down on something, you're cutting that material, right? There's a lot of control right through that and a lot of utility and I really really like that and then also it's really fun to fidget and really easy this is like a blocking system I wish was like on actually more nice right it's kind of like a lock back where it's not like you're flicking it out but it's way more fun to just be able to fidget like this even though it's not like that detent flick out anything like that I think it's a great system you can see the way that it works is is that there's this rounded bit kind of like a rounded back of a you know Victorinox slip joint, but then you have this little drop in that this back part interfaces against and as it wears it just constantly moves down which you know with a lot of these modern steel you know well engineered tools knives included and stuff you know you can open them 10,000 times and you can't even really estimate or judge the wear in you know if it's steel on steel and everything's properly heat treated so this is just really really great and I'm surprised that there's like no play to this really um, that's like a, a huge amount, right? It's actually pretty robust and solid when it's all locked up. So really, really cool stuff going on that there's an actual usable blade, you know, on this. The next thing that I like about this is the overall size and weight. You'd have to put it in your hand because, I mean, it is still like a solid, you know, dense multi-tool, right, with pliers. I think any of those are going to be, you know, really heavy unless they're like made out of carbon fiber and like you know new materials and stuff but for a steel multi-tool right this thing just does feel a little bit more light and because of that it feels a little bit more realistic to carry the other thing is the overall profile like i was saying anybody that i put this in their hand they're like it's so like nice and rounded and like you know this is like soft and this is rounded back here. You know, it's not like that wave where you have this big swell back here and the blades are kind of sticking up here and every, everything's so straight, slim and trim that even if it's just, you know, 7% or 10% small or whatever the thing is, it really does feel different. And ever since I've got this, just about every single day that I've had it, I've carried it because it is easy to go ahead and throw this in the back of your pocket and not feel like you're just being weighed down or anything like that. And I think that really comes into the other thing that I like is just the sort of overall EDC mindset of this thing. You know, something to mention about this tool, uh, you know, in sort of the middle ground where I don't love it or dislike it, like you know, or anything, but just something to mention is that this does use magnets in the tool here. Now the pivot is back here and the magnets right here. So, when you open up the tool, there is like a magnet floor. So if people that, you know, are going ahead and dealing with metal filings complain that this tool is a no-go and it's terrible engineering and, you know, um, they really went backwards in their, you know, thought process X, Y, Z. But the, the, the truth of the matter is, what is that? 10% of the population, 5% of the population that's going to be using this tool for the remainder of people that need a tool for EDC, which is a little bit more easy to use, a little bit more quick. You get this out of your pocket, you pinch here, you drop, you're holding something while you're doing that and you start using this tool, right? Or, you know, again, you need to, hold on, let me hold this piece of wood here. Um, I've got this Phillips, you know, started with by hand. Okay, let me get in there. And, you know, it's just awesome. You know, for that overall, most things that you're going to end up coming across as like a normal day-to-day -day person, you know, whether it's, you know, fixing up something on a motorcycle or, you know, again, maintenance around the house, take doing some mild electrical work, whatever the case would be, this fits so perfectly and is so nicely polished and overall made that I just think it is a knock out of the park 
if you can get past the, it has magnets, right? I mean, I'm a big watch today, of course. I have something that magnets really don't hurt, but I'm a big automatic watch guy. So, I mean, magnets aren't necessarily something I love, but I'm not like, hey, magnets, you know, here, there you go, Seiko, or whatever. So, just something to kind of keep in mind. Um, it is also very fun to fidget as well, you know, which is, I think, always a bonus to get something back into your pocket instead of like, this is heavy and I never really do anything with it. You know, it is, that's always a plus. So something just to keep in mind. There are some things to dislike about this tool, though, overall. The first thing is the blade material, right? Something that we will go to cover on this is the cost here in a little while. But for that cost, and just sort of the day and age that we're in, you know, 420HC just ain't cutting it, right? I mean, sorry, God, that was not even supposed to be a pun. Sorry, Nick, I'm not coming after you. That's not my shtick, right? But anyways, um, it, this this steel, I mean, it's fine. I mean, you can put an edge on it. I mean, I, I got it where it is crazy, you know, screaming, splitting your skin, you know, popping off hair sharp on the bottom of a coffee cup, right? So, I mean, that's definitely nice if you're in the field and you need to sharpen the sop, but it's going to end up, you know, losing that edge after maybe you know, 20 passes through cardboard or something like that, right? Or cutting some, like, nasty rope or something. I would just like to see something a little bit more modern. I mean, it, I don't think it's going to break the world to put 154CM on this or, you know, I would love to see some Sandvik, you know, 14C28 in or something like that, even 12C, right? Um, I don't, I think that things have come so far and the price is not really a huge different yield, that, uh, you know, Leatherman could have made an upgrade, especially for the price that they're demanding for these. The next thing is, you know, even though the quality of this tool overall is pretty good, one thing that always seems to be a little bit of a miss with Leatherman is their blade edges coming out of the factory. And this has definitely been the case with this tool. And, you know, all the other Leathermans that I've had, this thing, I could press my finger and saw back and forth and, you know, it, it wasn't, wasn't, you know, even doing anything. And, uh, but I was able, again, very simply, and I'm not very good at sharpening, right? But I'm able to get an edge that just, you know, blitherates through paper very simply. So, I mean, there is a little bit of a plus for that softer material. And sort of that's an argument that people I think will have for the rest of time. Like ease of sharpening means that you're gonna have a sharp knife versus holding an edge means that you're gonna have a sharp edge because it actually holds the edge, right? Which one is really gonna, you know, be the case. The thing that's really big for me that I do dislike, um, especially as a dad, is the Phillips here. So this is sort of a supposed to be jack of all trade, does it all, you know, just about right size Phillips, right? But for me, you know, being a dad, having little battering toys with little holes that are smaller and maybe a little bit of depth in there, right? Or maybe having tiny little Phillips head screws that are right on the surface, right? This is just not a great size. I mean, what, what this is like one size too big. Uh, I would like to see this be a little bit more fine, come to a point where you could get it in, you know, those smaller sort of things. I don't know what, you know, is the case that, that this is the right size. I think the right size is what comes in the wave as the standard, you know, two-sided bit, which we will certainly get to that topic. But, you know, something to keep in mind, this is just too wide. You're gonna, you know, strip out plastic if you're trying to, you know, force it in there. You know, and again, it's come to the point where I've had to actually use one of these other tools, which has luckily been able to get down in those smaller things, but still it's an all, so it's cutting the plastic which again, it isn't a big deal, but if it was a, something that you don't want to mar up, you know, important tool or toy, right? You know, perfect example. Here's probably what a battery would look like on a kid's toy about that size and depth in. Too big, I'm not even reaching it. So not to beat a dead horse there. Um, other than that, what I dislike, I would say, you know, is the file, um, you know, not that it's bad, it's definitely can do some work, but it's not the diamond file stuff, and it is pretty small. So I mean, you're not gonna wanna be getting on, onto anything, and you know, this might, you know, dull over time. It is pretty aggressive, so I don't say that it's useless, right? But, you know, again, uh, to me, I just don't think you need, you know, four or five different flathead sizes, which is really almost kinda, you know, to a point what you're, what you're kinda coming into here. I mean, I guess this isn't really a flathead. This is probably the most, 
you know, silly tool to have on here if you ask me, but, you know, just my opinion. Um, so that brings me on to things that are rubbish about this. So the first thing is the price. And I would say this is more between dislike getting into rubbish. I understand that multi-tools, there's a lot of engineering that goes into them, and there is a lot of companies that make them very well. So it's kind of like that, you know, conversation of, well, if you're going to buy, why not buy from the best, which to me is either Leatherman or, you know, Victorinox, right? When you're going to do that, and just depending on what use you need, right? Uh, SOGs probably, you know, make some tools that I've actually personally reviewed on the channel and love. So, you know, they might have some contenders, but these are definitely, you know, the Apple and the Samsung, you know, the Ford and Chevy of the, uh, you know, the tool world when it comes to applier, you know, style multi-tool. But even at that point, you know, this ends up coming in, I think, at right about $150. And to me, you know, it's a great tool, don't get me wrong, but I don't know if even how much I love this and how much I'm glad I own this and I am going to, you know, carry it like every day and, you know, all that stuff. I just feel like if I couldn't tell myself that this is $150 and get, get away with it. You know, if it was $119.99, okay, yeah, let's do it. I, I can, you know, justify that, and I'm not even somebody that uses this every day or works with it, right? This is more of a fidget thing, you know, open and close, and maybe try to find myself something to get myself into trouble so I can just use the tool, right, and, fidget, and sort of fidget with stuff. Um, maybe, you know, mileage may vary if I, you know, use this every day like an electrician or something like that, which I don't even know if this is the right tool set at that point to really be optimized for that. There may be better Leatherman tools that are more specific towards that. And in that, and sort of around that price is, you are getting a lot of engineering and the parts, but the biggest thing to me that is the um, thing that dropped the ball here is the lack of the Leatherman bit driver. You know, I have a Leatherman ratchet and I absolutely love that tool. And to me, um, Leatherman has an option here and almost a responsibility, if you ask me, to produce some sort of tool that will allow you to use that. If they're not going to build it in from the factory, because to me, a, a bottle cap opener is important. You know, drinking Mexican Cokes or, you know, Gatorade, as Metal Complex would say, or, um, you know, fancy Italian waters, whatever. I, I like a bottle opener on there so I think a cap lifter is important but at the same time I think Leatherman should come out with a very simply machined tube that just slits, uh, sits on here perfectly and then has like a magnet so it snaps on and then on the other side of that magnet you could put bits on like how hard is that for them to make that tool mass produced you know themselves it would be cheap and then they could say hey you can use the ratchet that we sell and give us money and buy this to give us money on this tool right it just makes sense and they just have said hey we're gonna put out this really cool tool and whatever if you have all these other cool tools you know deal with it the, uh, from the past and there's other mid-grade uh, leathermans that do have things that slide on their tools and enable you to use files and you know inline drivers and things like that so to me that is just absolutely rubbish that they've engineered these really cool uh, you know, bit system that's really flat and convenient to carry and do night maintenance and, you know, get into toys, like I said, and do change the air filter on your car and whatever. And then they come out with this as their halo tool. And then they go, and you only have this, I mean, kind of useful, but mostly not sized Phillips. Just, that's just my biggest, that's my biggest tool that I just about use. And to me, that that's just... It's very annoying and uh, highly rubbish, you know, that that's the case. So overall, what do I think about this tool? Well, I think that the tool is great. I'm glad that I own it. I don't think I'll ever get rid of it. Um, it's really something that I actually am surprised. Having so many people say they dislike it, and people that I, you know, trust their word, people like Cedric and Ada, people like Texas Toolshed, I think is what he's called, um, which he does a lot of Leatherman stuff and, you know, a lot of in-the-field use type things. Um, but, and other people, you know, they've ended up doing reviews on this, and some people are just not completely sold on it. And I think that, you know, for the EDC side and coming from sort of the modern night for all where things are smooth and fidgety and you know everything like that we want something that is a little bit more polished and overall you know just 
yeah, just made in sort of a more refined way is the word I'm looking for there. And this really, really meets that standard. But it definitely has some things dropped out where, you know, if I had a wave, I would probably be opening it and actually using it more, right? Even though it would be a more uncomfortable and f less than fun, you know, tool to use, the, the opening and closing side, I would actually be using it and finding different ways to get into stuff. Well, with this, you know, it looks really nice, but I'm kind of like, oh, let me kind of jerry rig a tool together that might be able to, you know, be used for a Phillips and, you know, again, not to really beat a dead horse there. So definitely recommend it if you are looking for an EDC tool that is a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter, but it still has a lot of full function and capability. But I definitely think Leatherman should end up coming up with some implements that are made for this tool to be able to, uh, you know, go in and, and kind of go with some of their legacy tools that they put a lot of love and engineering in, especially a, you know, bit adapter. I also know that there are tools that can replace this, but again, you're going to be replacing that cap lifter, you know, um, which is, is not a plus. And I don't think you should have to buy a tool and then buy a $60 tool and open up, modify it. That completely defeats the purpose of, you know, this is the stock tool, right? So for me, that's kind of where we're at. Anyways, I hope that you ended up going ahead and enjoying this review, especially this is a tool that I don't know if I would have you know, normally picked up, so I'm so glad that someone who is an end user like myself, who isn't using this necessarily professionally, but just more so as a hobbyist, gets to kind of go ahead and bring this to you. If you did like it, go ahead and give a like down below, as well as subscribe as it super helps the channel. And of course, without saying, if you have any questions, you can leave them down in the comments as I love talking to you guys. I also appreciate you taking time to go ahead and watch this video as there's so many great content creators that are out there and, uh, you know, you've watched this little video right here. Hope everybody stays safe and has a great rest of your week. Take care. Peace.